This morning we hope to finish this topic or get very close to the end of the topic on data transmission so we can look at some more details about transmission media and signals. So what we'll do first is after last week we introduced communication signals can be made up of a combination of sinusoid components and from that, that mathematical treatment of the signals we can work out things like bandwidth, frequency, data rate. We'll briefly distinguish between the different types of analog and digital data as well as the signals we use. Talk about noise and errors, that is things that impair our transmissions and finalise on some analysis or some more formal treatment of data rate and capacity. You know, you know this already, I think, that data, the stuff that we want to communicate, the information we want to convey between the two entities, can take an analogue or digital form. Examples of analogue data, voice, video, receiving temperature sensors, temperature values, continuously changing over time. And of course we can have digital, digital data as well text integers. Usually we represent them in binary, zeros and ones. So we can classify the data we want to communicate as either digital or analog. The way that we communicate that data is using signals. We send signals from a transmitter to a receiver. The signals represent that data and the signals can be either analog or digital. So we can have different combinations. We'll see that we can take our voice, analog data. Yeah. Uh, on, on. You you need to know what is what is the difference between analog and digital data. For example, if I asked a question, which one is voice, analog or digital? you'd be able to say that voice is analog data. I wouldn't ask you define, I don't think I asked define what is analog data, but given an example, you should be able to classify. Voice, I'm talking about coming out of your mouth or music coming out of instruments. The way that we record that on a computer is different. Originally the voice is analog data. We'll talk about recording it on a computer and transmitting it later. So the question about what would I ask in the exam, well you need to understand what is the difference between analog and digital. And the point here is that the data can be analog or digital but also the signals that we send can be analog or digital. And we're going to go through how those can combine together. And in fact, another aspect, we can talk about analog transmission and digital transmission. So we're going to go th through these three over the next four or five slides. Reasonably quickly, because most of it's obvious, and we'll just give a few examples. An example of analog data, audio, speech, voice, and music as the other good example. This diagram shows the spectrum of these two types of data. Speech is this solid green line. The spectrum is showing the frequency components that speech contains. So speech contains components ranging from around 100 hertz up to several kilohertz, several thousand hertz. And music, the dashed green line, contains frequencies from tens of hertz up to 10, 20, 30 kilohertz. And on this axis we see the strength of the signal, the typical strength. So when people talk, the frequencies are ranging in this area, speech. And music, as you would know, that music, 
has a higher range of frequencies. It covers a higher range of frequencies, a, a wider spectrum or a wider bandwidth. And our ears can distinguish them. That is, when we hear instruments, we can hear at the very high frequencies, which our voice doesn't generate normally when we talk. So just two examples of analog data, speech and music. And on this diagram, we also see some other things, which are not about the analog data, but about how that data is often transmitted. AM radio, for example. Here we show the limit, or the upper limit of the frequencies that AM radio can transmit. So when someone's talking on the radio on an AM channel, then speech can, can contain frequencies in this range. AM radio can transmit up to this range. If someone is saying something and there's a very high frequency in their voice, the AM radio cannot transmit that. FM radio has a limit here. It can transmit a wider range of frequencies. So it's more noticeable in playing audio across radio. If you listen on an AM channel, it can only transmit frequencies up to here. So all of these frequencies in the music would not be transmitted. So even if someone was playing live and they were transmitting over AM radio, the music would be generating frequencies in this range, but the AM radio channel would not transmit them. Whereas an FM radio channel could. It has a wider bandwidth. That is, FM's designed to allow a larger range of frequencies to pass through that channel. And hence you can perceive higher quality as a listener. Another example of a transmission or a, is using a telephone channel. This is a home fixed line telephone, not the mobile phone, but the normal old style telephone at home. A telephone channel typically supports bandwidth in, or this bandwidth. That is, it can transmit signals of frequencies of around several hundred hertz up to several kilohertz. It's a width of between three and four kilohertz. That covers most of our voice. So when we talk on the telephone, we could be generating frequencies from here up to here, but the telephone channel, that is the line that the telephone is connected to, can only transmit frequencies in this range. So when we talk, some of the frequencies of our voice may not be transmitted across to the other person at the receiving end. So they would not hear those frequencies, but it turns out that they can still understand what you're saying because it covers most of the frequencies and even if they cannot hear the high frequencies and the very low frequencies, they can still understand what you're communicating. So channels, communication links limit the frequencies that can be transmitted even if the data has a larger range of frequencies. So an example, or two examples of analog data, speech and music. Video is the other example, or other common example. Digital data, well we know text, integers, when we represent them as in their binary form, digital data, values that take, or they take discrete values over time. One value and then another value. What does this say? Who can read binary? Well, this is an example of a mapping of English characters and some other control characters. So an ASCII mapping or a, which maps characters to binary values. The way that we read it, the letter uppercase H is mapped to a seven bit value. First three bits are one zero zero, the last four bits one zero zero zero. We've seen, or I'm sure you've seen or used ASCII mappings in programming and, and different applications. So it's just a mapping of a character <coughs> to a binary value. And we can do the reverse if you like. And there are other mappings, that's just one. This is just one example. So that's our digital data. And normally we go down to the lowest form, which is binary, zeros and ones, when we talk about digital data.
Hello. Okay, that's data. We know about different types of data. When we want to communicate that data, we send signals between transmitter and receiver. Those signals can be either analog or digital. There's some representation of the data. And of course, an analog signal continu continuously varies. A digital signal takes discrete values over time. Like some voltage pulse. That is, we send on a line plus 5 volts for some period of time, for, for 1 millisecond. We're transmitting at positive 5 volts for 1 millisecond. That represents one piece of data. And then we could swap to negative 5 volts or 0 volts on that line for some period of time, say for one millisecond. So we have two discrete values that could represent a digital signal. This is one example here. So digital signals are considered as a sequence of voltage pulses. One pulse, another pulse, and so on. And we map, I oh know we won't say that yet, we'll see that shortly, when we compare the two different types of signals, they, have both, they both have advantages and disadvantages. Generally, digital signals are cheaper to generate, the equipment, and the interference from other signals are not so significant compared to analog signals. So that's a good thing. However, in some cases, the attenuation of those signals, how that signal propagates and gets weaker over distance, is worse or has a larger effect on the digital data or the digital signal. This is trying to illustrate it from the textbook that if this is what was transmitted, what, a sequence... What attenuation? So attenuation, and we'll go through in some depth, is the signal gets weaker over distance. A signal attenuates. Same as when I talk, the people up the front, if I didn't have a microphone, the people up the front would hear... A, no, the, the people up the front would hear my voice louder than the people up the back because the signal that comes out comes out at some strength uh -huh. and over distance gets weaker. That's the physical characteristics of sending any signal. We cannot avoid that. The signal attenuates. It gets weaker in strength over distance. In the next topic, we'll give some mathematics to show how much weaker it gets. We'll give some equations to show, to calculate how the signal attenuates over distance. But for now we say, in any signal we send, we send with some strength. As it propagates over some distance, it gets weaker and weaker. Digital signals can suffer more from su such attenuation than analog. That's just some brief comparison. So, We've got analog and digital data as well as analog and digital signals. We can combine them in any of four ways. We want to transmit the data using signals, so we've got four options. The first two, if we're using analog signals, well, the data that we're transmitting may be either analog or digital. And two common examples that you know of Here's the example of your normal home fixed line telephone. Not a mobile phone, but a telephone plugged into a cable on the wall at home. The telephone network transmits analog signals. And your voice is analog data. So basically what a telephone does, you talk into the handset, the handpiece, and it takes your voice, which is, we saw from one of the previous slides, ranges in frequencies from uh, several hundred hertz up to several kilohertz, a width of less than four kilohertz. So we transmit frequencies, that's our voice. Telephone takes that and transmits those frequencies over the cable, almost as is. So it takes the audio, your voice, and transmits them as signals across some electrical cable from the telephone as analog signals. So that's a case where we have analog data transmitted as analog signals. 
What about when you plug your computer into an ADSL modem at home? You have internet access at home. Well, that modem is still using the telephone line. It's plugged into the same socket eventually as the telephone. So that telephone network only transmits analog signals. So when you connect your computer to the modem, the we're still sending analog signals, but your computer is often generating digital data. What happens, your computer generates bits, sends those bits to the modem, the digital data, and the modem converts that digital data into analog signals. And what it does is it modulates the, the, an analog signal based on the input bits. And the receiver, the receiving modem, receives the analog signal and demodulates to get the original <coughs> digital data back. And hence we get a modem, a modulator and demodulator. The way in which it maps the digital data to the analog signal, we've got an entire topic on, but we know of one, one case. Uh, yeah? For the modem to transmit the data in the telephone line, they transmit in the analog, not, not like the beep and uh, have sound or no sound, like the Morse code? No, it's tr transmitting analog signals. Yeah, analog signals uh, across the telephone network. So, yeah, your modem is transmitting analog signals in that case. We'll see some in the next slide ex examples of transmitting digital signals. So it's continuously varying over time. We know one way to map. Very simple case we may have seen already. If I want to transmit bit, bit one, we could transmit some high level of our signal. Let's say we transmit a sine wave like that. Whenever I want to transmit bit 1, send some sine wave th with this amplitude. If I want to transmit bit 0, we could do something different. Not send or send a sine wave with 0 amplitude. So that this signal, this analog signal, represents bit 1, the digital data. This analog signal represents bit 0. We've got an entire topic that covers different ways to map digital data to analog signals and also vice versa. Now we're just saying what's possible. The other two approaches is if we want to transmit digital signals. Your mobile phone transmits digital signals. Your old telephone in your home has been around for, or telephone networks have been around for 100 years and they still use the old approach of sending analog signals. That's how the system was built. But mobile phones nowadays transmit digital signals. They send pulses from your mobile phone to the receiving station, the base station somewhere. But when you talk on your mobile phone, you're generating analog data. So inside your phone, you talk, Analog data comes out of your mouth, goes to the microphone and your phone takes that analog data and converts it into bits, digital data which can be transmitted as digital signals. We have what's called, well, we encode, we encode the voice in a binary form and the receiver takes the digital signal and decodes it back to get the analog form and hence we get a codec, a coder and decoder. So that's an example of sending digital signals with analog data. And the final case is if we have digital data and we have a digital signal that can be transmitted where we just have some mapping of the zeros and ones to the signal that's being transmitted. So we can have those four combinations and different systems in use today use each of those four. Mobile phones, this is a good example when we're talking. Traditional phones with analog and analog. Your home computer uses the analog signal but with digital data. And many large wide area networks use digital transceivers.
a device that transmits digital and receives digital, a digital transceiver. Some audio equipment could use this, a digital audio system. Although originally would have analog data, between the components may transmit digital data. So we have those four different options available. Which one's best? Well, there are different trade-offs that need to be considered in each of them. Generally, sending digital signals nowadays is considered more is considered best. That just summarizes those four different options. The final thing, so we've got analog and digital data, analog and digital signals, and we can also say we have either analog or digital transmission. And the easiest way to distinguish these two is the, the way to uh, repeat, actually wrong word, the way to get the data across a large distance. Let's consider. Because of attenuation, we transmit some signal and it gets weaker over distance. It'll get to some point where the signal is so weak that no one can hear that or understand that. So if I wanted to talk to someone in the next room, most likely if I didn't have the microphone, if I talk at the normal level, they will not hear me. My signal will come out, it will get so weak as it gets to the back of the room and someone in the next room would not hear me. So how do I communicate with someone in the next room? Well, I can have an intermediate point that takes what I've transmitted and then sends it on to the next person. Maybe they could talk, tell the person out in the corridor, they would tell another person and eventually tell the receiver. So we have intermediate devices to cover some distance that a single link could not cover. If we have a source device that wants to transmit our data, it can only transmit over a certain distance before the signal becomes too weak. So therefore we introduce an intermediate device that takes that signal and then we'll send again to our destination. Because if we send direct from source to destination, the signal will be too weak at the destination for the destination to understand. This is common, especially when we want to cover a large distance. Like a relay. And the difference between analog and digital transmission is what this device does. Two options. The first one is an amplifier. If we're sending analog signals, if we can think or visualize what the source transmits, it sends some analog signal with some strength, some sine wave, or, and it gets weaker over distance. So we transmit at this strength, the signal attenuates, gets weaker. What is received is this. An amplifier takes the signal that is received and increases its magnitude. It amplifies that signal and transmits that signal amplified. So it takes this part received and multiplies that or increases the magnitude and transmits the amplified version of this. And of course that gets weaker over distance. The destination receives the signal here and makes out what data that communicated. That's how an amplifier works. The same with our audio amplifier. My voice is analog data. It goes through this, goes to the microphone, sent as analog signal across the cable to the wireless transmitter, which also sends analog signals to the receiver, sends analog signals down to the amplifier in the cupboard, and that increases the strength of the signal so that when it comes out of the speakers, it's much louder than when it comes out of my mouth. This is analog transmission. Our signal is analog.
using amplifiers is considered analog transmission. We're transmitting analog signals and we're amplifying them to cover a large distance. We cannot use digital signals and an amplifier. It doesn't make sense because digital signals are one level and another level. The amplifier, if we, if we want to use the same levels all the time, we cannot increase the magnitude. So what's the alternative? We use this intermediate device, a repeater. We have our source, let's say it has some digital data to send, some sequence of zeros and ones. That's the digital data to send. And as an example, it converts that into some digital signal. Some representation of the data, some discrete pulses. Transmits that. It gets weaker over distance. I haven't drawn that very well, but it gets also it attenuates. What the repeater does when it receives that weak digital signal, it decodes and gets the original binary values back. So it takes the received signal and maps, okay, we had a high value here, that must represent a 1. We have a low value here, that must represent a 0, and so on. So it decodes the received signal to get the binary values at the repeater. It should match what was transmitted. This and then uses these binary values to transmit a new signal. And it should be the same digital signal. There's a subtle difference. In the amplifier, we just took the analog signal and increased the magnitude. Here, we take the received signal, convert it back to our digital data, our zeros and ones, and then the repeater does the same as what the source did, is map that digital data into a digital signal and sends that signal. So you mean that the digital read the data and understand and uh, reproduce the new one, I like the same and send it. Yes, it, it reads the received signal, understands it, that's a good point, it understands what that signal means in terms of the, the digital data here, and then generates a new signal based on this digital data. Whereas in this case, the amplifier just received the analog signal. It doesn't care what it represents in terms of data. It just receives it and increases the magnitude and transmits. So it's simpler at the amplifier. At the repeater, it needs to decode and transmit a new signal. Where does this bring any benefits? Imagine we have noise or some impairments in here. And noise is some additional signal that's introduced by the system. So this is our transmitted signal, but noise created by other transmitters causes this received signal to look different from the transmitted signal. We have some, some variations in what's received. So we also have some noise involved here. With an amplifier, we don't distinguish the noise and the real signal. We simply amplify everything. So the noise components will be amplified as well. With our repeater, there may be noise. Our repeater needs to decode and get the original data and try to overcome any noise. And then it's got a clean, we can think a clean feed of that data. The noise has been removed and then transmits a new signal which should be free of that noise that was on the first link. In this case, the noise can be amplified and continues through the system 
in this case the noise on the first link should not impact on what is transmitted on the second link. So that can be an advantage of using this repeater rather than simply amplifying the signal. The disadvantage is the repeater is more complex. It needs to understand and do that conversion of the signal back to the data. We can do the same with a repeater with an analog signal. If we have digital data and we convert it to an analog signal, we saw previously that's what our modem does, takes the digital data, converts to an analog signal, signal. We can send an analog signal here and still use a repeater. What it does, it takes this received signal, converts it back to bits, and then the repeater generates the new analog signal based upon these bits. The noise which was in the received signal should be fixed or removed by the repeater. So, although it may look the same as here, the advantage of the repeater is that, or that the steps of the repeater first is to take the received signal convert it back to the digital data, transmit a new signal and that new signal should be free of any noise from the previous link or any errors. In this case we take the received signal and simply amplified what was received which may include the noise from the previous link. So over multiple links the noise would increase. The noise from this link plus the noise from this link and the next link at the final destination could be quite significant and that can be bad. In this case we try to fix it along the, along the way at each repeater. This is digital transmission. This is analog transmission or one way we can characterize them. Digital transmission is generally preferred today. When people are building new networks, especially large networks, they'll try to use digital transmission because of the benefits of using a repeater. And other benefits, things like security, which we don't touch upon in this course, can be easier. We can encrypt the data, encrypt the signals easier if we've got the digital data. We can encrypt this much easier. We can give more accurate data transmission and we can do other fancy things like combine data from multiple sources quite easy compared to using the analog signals and amplifiers. So that finishes on this small part. Analog and digital data can be transmitted as either analog or digital signals. And in terms of analog transmission, we're dealing with analog signals which are amplified and digital transmission, either types of signals, but representing digital data, which is repeated to cover a large distance. We've mentioned several times, I mentioned there, noise, and we've mentioned attenuation these are transmission impairments. Sorry, that's just a summary of those transmission techniques. Transmission impairments, the things that cause problems for our transmission. In the perfect world, we would send a signal and that signal that was transmitted would be received in the identical form. It would be the same. But unfortunately, when we transmit a signal, it attenuates, it gets weaker. That's some impairment that we need to deal with. And also we may have things like other people transmitting which cause noise. There's another impairment that we need to deal with. Which make for our imperfect world and lead to things like errors and degradation in signal quality. So the signal received because of transmission impairments will be different from what was transmitted. 
that leads to the problems of, if we're using analog signals, some degradation in the quality. I transmit high quality voice through the transmission system. There are impairments. There's attenuation of the signal. It gets weaker. There's noise. There's noise from the air conditioners. There's noise from other people talking. So the receiver receives a lower quality signal and has to deal with that and get whatever data they can from it. With digital, we get bit errors. We transmit a sequence of bits or a signal representing a sequence of bits. If there are impairments, what can go wrong is that the receiver thinks that what was transmitted is different from what was actually transmitted. If we transmitted 101 and the receiver thinks it was 111, there's one bit error in there. One of those bits is wrong. That's the problems that occur. The analog signal degrades or we get bit errors. What causes those pr problems? Attenuation. Signal gets weaker. And related to that, distortion due to attenuation, we'll see that. Some delay distortion we'll quickly cover. And noise. Let's look at those three. Again, reasonably quickly, we don't want to go through too many details, just mention what they are. Attenuation. Signal strength gets weaker as a function of distance. And it's usually close to an exponential degradation. That is, if we take our signal and we transmit over some distance, if we double the distance that we transmit, then the signal degradation, the attenuation, is four times as great. The larger, the further we go, the much weaker it gets. It starts off strong, it quickly gets very weak, the signal. So we need to deal with that because what a receiver needs to do is take the received signal and that signal received must be strong enough such that the electronics can understand it. Same as when I talk, your ear... If we turn off the microphone, you can hear me, people at the back. If I start have a lower signal strength... Lower signal strength... Lower signal strength... Can you hear me? So, 